anyone in in Europe and good morning for anyone in South America. So we have 46 <laughs> participants. Daniel, are you there? Are you there? Yes, I'm here drinking my coffee. Good, good man. morning. <laughs> morning and, and happy birthday, by the way. So Thank yes. You. <laughs> So yesterday was the birthday of, of Daniel, our speaker today. Um, wait, we, 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 we should waiting a little bit. Now it's 49 participants, so we will wait like, uh, usually we will wait for five or until 10 minutes uh, for everybody okay. to come. And uh, for anyone who just entered, I will uh, please you to, to turn the, the microphone off, uh, but not the video, I hope, uh, so we can see I each other. Off the video. No, no, turn on, bro. It's okay. 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 Turn, turn it on. It's okay. For for the speaker, it's okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. See you guys. So. So yeah, maybe I would like to introduce a little bit uh, the background of the event. So it started like three weeks ago that. Uh, me and few friends actually that connected with this this like a uh, architecture uh, architecture community or we can say architectural collective here. The name is Rabung Nada. We 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 decided to 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 fulfill something during these quarantine times. As we know, all of us are staying at home this day, and we don't do some that uh, some of uh, much activity this day. That's why we decided to why 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 don't we we feel with a little bit more architecture. So, so even though we cannot work uh, from the office, or even though we cannot we cannot uh, travel, uh, we we can still we can still uh, doing and learning an architecture. So that's that's the basic idea. So Rabumada is the founder. Uh, mostly us uh, are from this this uh, inst this uh, we we were studying in this uh, university called ITS in Surabaya, Indonesia. Uh, you can. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Akbar Junaidi as our founder. Um, myself, Randy Hendrawan, Zefania Dolorosa, my partner in this in my studio in Supratma Arsitektura, uh, Fikri Iza and Sulfikar Ibrahim from SB301. Uh, also Gilang Gilang Fajar uh, from himself. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, basically we start. Uh, this weekly lecture just because we feel like uh, we, we, want, we want to keep doing, doing and learning about architecture. So I, I did the first session, the first presentation I did it and I, I was talking about Alvaro Siza and then a week after my friend who graduated from Hangzhou University, China Academy of Art Hangzhou, Faiz, he, he's here now. Uh, he, he, he was talking about Wang Shu uh, about his experience to live in Hangzhou and studying Chinese architecture. Last week we did with uh, Soto, So Fujimoto, uh, with, with, with Arya Samudra, and this week we're, we're trying to maybe once every month to 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 create like an international session like this. I mean, I could see a uh, few of you. Uh, there are one person from Russia, Anya. Hi, Anya. Hey Anita. Uh, I could see also uh, Atta from Turkey and Gon. Gon, uh, he's Argentinian and now he's he's working in Italy. So it's 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 a little bit different because this is uh, minus twelve hours in Mexico. So it's exactly nine a.m. now in Mexico and and Drink four p.m. four p.m. in Italy and five p.m. in Turkey. And minus, I guess it's 7:30 in India, right, Rishab? And and of course now it's 9 p.m. in Indonesia. So so I, I I would love for you to turn the videos on because otherwise we 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 can know each other. But but during the presentation, uh, I hope you guys uh, put the the mute, the mute on your your profile your Zoom profile. So yeah. Oh, I see Claudia here from Italy. And yeah. Uh, Danny, yeah. Uh, for for Unet, maybe you can, you you can uh, stop the screen now. Hi, hello, Rishab. <laughs> and, hey, Rishab. Oh, it's it's Zach. 
Hi, Zach. Zach is in Seattle now. It's 7 a.m. Oh. in Seattle. We just, just woke up. Cool, Zach. Uh, me and Daniel met Zach uh, when we were staying in La Tauret uh, by Le Corbusier. And now we're still remaining friends. Um, where is Daniel? Here. Here. I'm here. Okay. This is Daniel Aranda. Uh, I would like to, to introduce you a little bit. He was, he was born and raised in Guadalajara. In, in Jalisco, in Mexico. When we were start studying in Italy, in Politecnico di Milano, uh, in Mantova, uh, he was speaking Indonesian, as a, literally Indonesian, like, apa kabar? Nama saya Daniel. <laughs> Nama <laughs> saya like, Daniel. <laughs> he he, he speaks Indonesian because he has been in, in, uh, to Indonesia. He's he, he been to Bali uh, once before, and he loved it. And after, after that, we, we we maintain maintaining our friendship. We work we were working together in 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 the studio in second semester uh, during the class of Eduardo Soto de Mora. We 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 had so many architectural trips. Uh, the, the most uh, memorable was when we when we decided to 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 start the pilgrimage uh, of the archi the architecture of Le Corbusier. And uh, we were staying in La Torre for two nights, absorbing this Corbusian for more than forty eight hours was cool and we before i went home i we decided to to we went to to Bruder klaus chapel by peter zumtor and stuff but yeah uh as i told you in the instagram story i i i i told you that danny always uh put luis baragan in, in the middle of our discussion in the middle of our trip though so i always listen uh, the story about Luis Bargan, but not 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 very complete, not not completely. So what I thought is, uh, why why just two just me and Danny, uh, just why don't just me listen to him while we we can hear all of it. So so I that's why I decided to to me and my friends decided to invite him to speak. Daniel, yeah, sorry, the the screen was freeze. Um, should I start now? Yeah, sure. Okay. Semalat uh, malam. Namasaya made Daniel. Apakabar. Well, uh, see, uh, guys from Mantova, uh, Risha, Anya, Gon, maybe Francesco, Diana, uh, Ayita. I love you guys. Uh, so cool to see you here. So I'm going to start now. I'm going to share the screen. Okay, guys, uh, this is an introduction to Luis Barragan. It's not like uh, quite deep or profound because uh, Randy told me that not many of you guys know Luis Barragan, but well, I will talk the best I can about him. Luis Barragan was born in Guadalajara, Mexico in 1902, and he died in Mexico City in 1988. He won the Pritzker Prize in 1980. So Riz Barragan and I, we, we are from the same city. Uh, it's, it's a city, it's the second biggest city in Mexico and it's quite um, strong in cultural, uh, economic things. Well, first of all, I would like to talk about the discovery of America. Uh, you know that the Spanish people found America in the 15th century. So uh, they, they imported the, the Christian architecture of the churches to the Mesoamerican civilization, which is completely different culture. Uh, so you see here this church in Ravenna and the pyramids of Kukulkan in Chichen Itza. They are completely different architecture. So what happens when you mix these kind of things? This is La Capilla de, de Chuchivistlan. It's the first syncretic architecture. It's a mix between the pyramid and the church. It's an open space. Uh, it's, it's, it's a Christian uh, building made by Mexican hands. So with the time, the progression from these kind of buildings 
started to happen to the monastery. And from the monasteries, it moved to the hacienda. The hacienda is the places where Luis Barragan was grown, uh, where he spent his childhood. So this, this relation between the, the, the monastery and the hacienda are the most important um, influence in the architecture of Luis Barragan. Okay, so I'm gonna start to talk about a little bit of the Pritzker Prize speech. Uh, this speech is one of the best uh, syn uh, synthesis of the work of Luis Barragan. Uh, it's very important for to understand the, the work of Luis Barragan through feelings. I, I think that Barragan is the first uh, phenomenology per, uh, architect in the last century, before Giuliani Palasma, before Peter Sumtor, before many others. Barragan, I think, is the first person that is talking about feelings in architecture. So, nostalgia. Uh, I want to show you the immediate cultural context of Luis Barragan. These kind of towns where he visited uh, when he was a child. He used to go to the south of Guadalajara, to the outside of the city, on the small towns uh, in the south of Jalisco, like La, La Manzanilla, La Manzanillera, etc. These places are rich in a kind of mystical, uh, nostalgic thing, uh, feeling. Uh, the, the old town with the thick walls, the wooden wall, uh, the stairs, um, the loggia, which is an influence of the Western civilization, but it's made with Mexican hands. So there's uh, a fusion between both cultures. So there's the the arches, but uh, there's this kind of uh, different way of habitate the weather, the climate. Uh, Barragan always talk about beauty. Uh, the invent invincible difficulty that the philosophers have in defining the meaning of this world is unequivocal proof of its ineffable mystery. For Barragan, beauty is the, the mean and the end for any artist. It's, 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 it's the most uh, mystery, uh, the most mystique part of architecture. Uh, he was inspired by these places. Uh, he was a very religious person. For him, thanks to religion, to the mystery of knowing where we came from and what is happening in the outside of our existence, the religion for Baragán was very important. Uh, he was a very religious person and uh, quite devout. Uh, her ha his houses were full of crosses. Solitude. Baragán was a, so a solitary person. He never got married. He never had children. He was a uh, celibate. Uh, he, I will show you later his bed. He, he was sleeping in an individual bed. So he was always alone. Uh, this is a church that was sepulchred by an uh, eruption of a volcan, of a volcano. So this is an exact example of Baragan, landscape and solitude. If you could uh, compare the person of Luis Baragan to a building, this will be Baragan, a landscape made of rocks, silence. Okay, so Luis Barragan never studied architecture. He 
He studied civil engineering from 1919 to 1923. And then he wanted to know more about architecture. So he traveled to Spain and France. So he went to Alhambra de Granada. There is Barragan. He's a very tall person. He was like 190, almost as tall as gone. He was huge. Uh, he was, he fell in love with La Granada. For him, the joy uh, of a place is, is uh, the most important thing in architecture. Uh, well, the gardens are the most important thing in the, the work of Luis Barragan. If you see the patios, For Barragan, the patios is the connection from the outside to the inside. You, you, you have to understand the weather of Mexico because Mexican weather is, is mild. I mean, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. So the interstate spaces, the, 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 the patios with the loggias and then the rooms, is, it was very well adopted into Mexico. Uh, so this kind of places that show serenity is the most important thing for Barragan. So the work of Barragan is deeply influenced by the Arab occupation in Spain. Okay, for Barragan, he used to say that he is more a landscape garden architect than a builder, than an architect. He was in love with gardens because he, he found a book called Les Colombiers from a French uh, architect called Ferdinand Bach. These are the drawings of Ferdinand Bach. When Barragan went to Europe, he brought this book back to Mexico and he gave it to his friends. So he started to design gardens. The gardens are the most important thing in the work of Barragan. So, okay, I'm gonna show you the first works of Barragan in Guadalajara, his native city. So you can see that the influence of Ferdinand Bank and the Alhambra de Granada is, is easily to recognize in the work of Casa Cristo and Casa eh, Luna uh, Gonzalez Luna in Guadalajara. So, La Casa Robles de Leon, you can see the arches, the stucco, the, the celosia, the lattice work, which is deeply influenced in the Moor architecture. Uh, this is the Casa Cristo. This is a, a drawing by Ferdinand Bach, and this is a door by Barragan. So you can see the influence of the Arabic culture brought from, uh, from, from Spain to Mexico. The word Guadalajara means was al hijara which means a uh, river running through stones. Hijara, my name of Hijara Studio is an Arabic word uh, brought from Spain, uh, which is, means a stone. So you can see the influence of Arabic culture in, in, in Guadalajara, in Mexico. You can see the patios. It's very important. The interspaces, uh, a, a relation with a closed space, with, a, uh, with an open space is very important in the architecture of Barragan. Garden, most important thing, and the fountains. There's always a fountain in the work of Luis Barragan. It, it, it is the most uh, mysterious, uh, nostalgic, uh, energetic place. Okay, so 
you have to understand that the difference between the architecture in Guadalajara and the architecture in Mexico City is completely different. Because Barragan, he took a period of time to study more the modernism movement. Because Barragan, he was a revivalist, a, 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 a romantic uh, repetition of the old traditions. But in Mexico City, he started to use Le Corbusier, Mies van der Rohe, uh, Richard Neutra, uh, Rudolf Schindler. Uh, so he started to do a completely different architecture. This is the house of this house studio. He is a person that the most important thing is interior. For him, the facade doesn't matter. For Barragan, the facade is unimportant. The thing is the mysterious spaces in the inside. This is the, the, the reception room, another reception room with a painting of Matthias Geritz, a German uh, artist that migrated after the Second World War to, to Mexico, first from to Guadalajara and then to Mexico City. This is the, 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 the living room of Barragan. Uh, you can see here the, the, the window to the garden. Barragan hates glass windows, uh, he, but he loves the gardens. For him, the mystery of spaces is surrounded by walls. Uh, this painting called Homage to Square was made by uh, Joseph Albers, a German artist from the Bauhaus that uh, was a teacher in, in jail with Louis Kahn. Uh, Joseph Albers was friend of Barragan. Uh, so, well, this painting, actually, I was telling Brandy that it's a pyramid. This is the pyramid of the sun. So if you see here the floor plan, the, 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 the top view of the building is the same as the homage to a square. So it's a pyramid. Uh, uh, Joseph Albers uh, loved Mexico. This is another pyramid. He, he loved the pyramids. And he was constantly traveling to, to Mexico to take pictures. So Joseph Albers was a friend of Louis Kahn. And uh, Louis Kahn uh, wanted to make a garden in the Salt Institute. Uh, but he didn't know what to do. So he asked Joseph Albers to tell Barragan to design the garden. And Barragan said, don't, don't put nothing. Just leave the ocean open and just put a, a fountain. Uh, this is the sensibility that the Luis Barragan have uh, to, connect, to connect with nature, a dialogue with the landscape, with water, with the, with the sky, with the gardens, with the, with the ocean. Uh, so, this is the entrance, then the pink room, then you enter to the living room. Here is a painting of, of, of Joseph Albers, then the big garden. Look, the, the, the garden is bigger than the house. I mean, for, for Barragan, the garden is almost more important than the building. This is the floor plan. Uh, look at the complexity from one space to another space, then to another space, then the garden, then a small place, and then another one. But look at the heights. The, the, the division of the rooms, he's, he's, he's making transition between spaces that are connected. I mean, uh, the sensibility of Luis Barragan of, of making interstate spaces, the interstate spaces, how you go from one room to another and you share the same light 
I mean, he's quite sensible in the section. The section is, is very important in Luis Barragan because the, the, the spaces, Luis Barragan is a designer of spaces. And this is Mario Bota uh, in the famous stairs of Luis Barragan. Uh, the window is not looking to outside. The window is just a, 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 a way to filtrate the light inside the room. This is another spaces sharing the same height. This is here. Uh, the connection of spaces, the, the vinculation of one space to another is, is very important. So you go from here, there, 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 and then you go to the other room. Uh, this is the bed of Luis Barragan. He was a very religious person. One, one single bed. He slept all of his life in this bed. He never got married. He never had children. He was a devout uh, religious person uh, in search for beauty. Uh, Soto de Moura, uh, Peter Sumtor, uh, Alvaro Sisa uh, are influenced in Luis Barragan. Most, most of the architects after postmodernism, we, we could say that the, the beginning of postmodernism is with Louis Kahn. But Barragan is, is, is also a, a, a great postmodern because he uses the the old hacienda, the, the, the monasteries, architecture mixed with the colors of Mexico. Uh, this is an, a, a window to the sky. This is a project of Le Corbusier, Le Belvedere. Uh, he made a wall, Le Corbusier, to look at the Arc of Triomphe and then a window to the sky so you don't see the city. Baragán knew Louis, uh, Le Corbusier. Uh, he, he was a very conservative architect, but he, 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 he changed the, 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 the tradition to the modernism. Uh, so Fujimoto, Goha Segawa. Shigeruban, sorry. Uh, Shigeru. Shigeruban, sorry, Shigeruban, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Ro. Uh, Goha Segawa, Luis Barragan. Uh, for, for Barragan, uh, there's an, a spiritual connection to nature. So the sky is, 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 is as important as the garden, uh, the water, the fountains. Uh, the building itself is not, as, is not complete if you don't have nature. Casa Prieto Lopez, a temporality. This is uh, a really nice. Uh, house in Mexico City. He's a minimalist, a total minimalist. Uh, the entrance and the wall. I mean, is this necessary? He's, he's the patio. And then you go to this room. I mean, he, look at the material. It's a volcanic stone called uh, uh sorry i forgot the name of the stone is uh it's a volcanic stone this is in the outside it's in the outside and he put it in the inside so he's making a transition between the outside into the inside uh peter sumter says that barragan is one of the most atemporal architects in, in, in the last century uh He's creating spy spaces and he's creating uh, phenomenology, sensations, uh, like Julani Palasma would say, the, the eyes of the skin. He's, he's, he's showing uh, the, the, the changes of spaces to another uh, with the light. He's, he's an architect that makes transitions from the outside to the inside. 
So you are always related to nature, to the landscape. This is the volcanic stone. Uh, this is the same material. That Cuadra, Cuadra San Cristobal is, is uh, if you see here, the pink color is related to the green. This is the Johannes Eaton color of star. So you, you see the, contra the, the, the contradiction between one color and another, the pink and the green. So Barragan uses the pink to show the green. It's a contrast of colors. Uh, he's composing like a painting, uh, the landscape, the nature. Uh, the architecture is just, a medium to talk to the gardens, to the nature. Tadao Ando. Tadao Ando is connecting the nature with the with the with the architecture. This is Barragan. Barragan is not about colors. Barragan is by understanding a dialogue with nature, with garden, with sky, with the trees, uh, with the landscape. That, that's the architecture, the, the relation of, 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 of man-made with nature-made. Uh, Las Capuchinas Sacramentarias is for me, is, is the best building of Luis Barragan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you cannot take pictures. Uh, it's, it's prohibited to take pictures there. So there are not many pictures. And even if, a, if you take a picture of Capuchina Sacramentarias, you won't understand very well the complexity of one space to another space to another a space, a relation between the outside, the inside, the landscape, the, the light, the colors, is quite complex. Uh, I mean, you see the cross here, the light comes here and projects a shadow. I mean, this is, this is a design with nature, this is a, a design with light. Uh, is, is, is a composition of, of simplicity, man-made with complex nature uh, uh, landscape. This is the window made by uh, Matthias Geritz. So it's projecting here to create a shadow of the cross. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's a majestic place. You have to be there to understand. Casa Gilardi uh, is one of his last houses. Uh, you go to the private place and then to the public space. It's a transition. Uh, Barragan always changes the lights and is making transitions from one space to another. Uh, it, it's difficult to understand, but he's preparing you, your eyesight to understand the inner light. Okay. Oh, that's that's the end of the slide, bro. Yeah. Okay. Too fast? No, no, it's perfect. Okay. So everybody, maybe you could give the virtual clap to Danny. Thank you, Danny, for for the wonderful presentation. I, I guess I 
uh, I never heard about several things that you you just uh, you just telling us. So it's just it's really nice presentation, Danny. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, okay, because we have like 100 participants now maximum because we we only could able to accept 100 uh, participants. I would like for for any audiences uh, to to have like some some question or thoughts or just some doubts maybe I, anything you you would like to to say with to to Danny and maybe we could discuss it together because uh, Daniel here we we asked Danny to to give the, us the presentation because because maybe he knew more about Baragan from us but he he's not the experts of Baragan for sure I mean he he didn't know him he never worked for him but so so let's put the position that uh, let's discuss together uh, let's discuss not, not about something wrong or right you know so I would like to everyone any any of you the audience if you want to ask please uh, click the, the the button of participants and you can put the raise hand uh, button and yeah so but uh, sorry i have to speak in indonesian buat teman-teman indonesia yang mau tanya dalam berbahasa indonesia juga boleh nanti saya bantu translate kalau misalnya mau tanya silahkan atau mau diskusi silahkan saya nanti akan bantu translate terima kasih oke okay. oh the first question will be from rishab oke okay, rishab hello where is your video you can turn on the the mute and you can unmute and turn on your video. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Go for it. Yes, yeah. Richard, I can hear you. Yeah. How are you, bro? So good. <laughs> so my question is a uh, uh, good presentation. My question is uh, if, uh, like you said, that uh, Baragan uh, cared much less about the exterior and much more about the interior, which is uh, an architect's itself choice. But isn't it like when we put less efforts on the exterior is like taking away uh, the beauty from the outside world, if you say, like in a, in, if I interpret in that way, I mean, that's an individual architect's choice. But do you think, uh, is it, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I hope you understand my question. Yes. Uh, well, Barragan, he never studied architecture. He studied civil engineer. And uh, mm -hmm. he, pen, he went to, to, to Spain and France to, to Alhambra. So he fell in love with the inner spaces, with the patios, with the connection with the outside and the inside by feeling, by sensation, mm -hmm. by uh, phenomenology, and not by, uh, not, not because of decorations. Uh, but what I want to say is that Le Cour uh, 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 Luis Barragan, he, he changes a lot from the architecture of Guadalajara to the architecture of Mexico City. The architecture of Guadalajara is an architecture that can be understood on the exterior, right? The arches, uh, let me show. The arches, this is, this is the outside. This is the first architecture of Luis, Barra, of, of Luis Barragan uh, uh, in Guadalajara. But then he studied Le Corbusier, right? And Le Corbusier yeah. is le, the machine of habitation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so Luis Barragan, he made a translation of the machine of, la, la, la machine de habitar, uh, the, the, this machine of habitation, into the sensations of the old hacienda and old monasteries uh, of inner spaces. Barragan is, he completely erased the arches, the windows, the decoration. He, he, he became minimalist. Uh, wait, 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 wait. This. I mean, he made, uh, after Le Corbusier, he made his machine of habitation. And his machine of habitation is minimalism and a, 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 a bigger sensation of relation with nature. So he doesn't care about the facade. Uh, he just care about the, the machine. Uh, wait.
he only cares about the light. That's it. He doesn't care about more. This window is this one. He, he only cares about light. He doesn't care about design. He's making a, a, a machine of, 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 of uh, 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 empowerment, of sensations, of intimacy. Because Baragán, he was a spiritual person and he, he never got married, he never got children. So he was an uh, intimate person. He was all about his spirituality. Does it answer your question? How's Rishabh? It's good? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, for anyone, anyone else who want to uh, have some question or have some discussion for Daniel, please. Any of you? Uh, you can speak in Indonesian also, so doesn't matter. Okay, maybe maybe I will I will ask something, bro. Okay. I I, I was reading this book by there is this uh, Indonesian architect writer in, who who wrote this book. Uh, it's it's called uh, Arsitektur yang lain. Her name is Afianti Arman, uh, or the translation is uh, the other architecture. Okay. She has a chapter about Luis Barakan. Uh -huh. Basically, she tried to 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 roll what is inside the the the, the, the Prisker Prize uh, speech of Barakan and uh, some other statement from Alfaro Siza from his publication because Siza and Soto de Mora wrote the 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 the, the official publication for Barakan. So okay. she mentioned a little bit like. Uh, uh, the architecture of Louis Baragan is, it's looks like uh, the, the it's it sounds like the metaphor of vessel, you know, the vessel. Yes. Uh, yes. It's like the water is more important than the exactly. clay what made it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, an example like when you ex explain about the window, it's like the the window. The, the most important part of the window is the how light. you could in, invite the light and. Uh, of course, the opening for the for the view, for example, in the, yeah. at the living room, in the garden. yeah, to, towards the garden. So not to the outside because he doesn't want yeah. to be seen in the outside. Not 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 the facade, not uh -huh. not how it how it will looks like, not not even the decoration or the design of the of the part of the window itself, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the the part of it. But later on, his uh, late architecture, when he started using many many of the color palettes. Uh, he, you just told told us before in the presentation that the pink color is actually the reverse of the green, so yeah. everybody could see the 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 the, the all the of greener. the trees uh, with with more more greener fish, visual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but you also mentioned that Baragan and Louis can also the the emerge one of the merger of of postmodernist architecture. So, so do you think? Baragan also used these color palettes also for decoration or purely for only for 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 any other purpose like for example that the pink color is to make the the garden greener and also the the red palettes you were showing me the the, the chapel right the, the chapel is, I, I guess you ever told me that Baragan used this color of the red color inside the chapel just to 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 make our pupil yes. thinks that, I don't know, the, the garden could be greener or it's, yes. I, I don't know, you, you ever told me this. So the main what? question of me, like, do you think he used all those pile colors for a reason or some other else, some other colors he, he used are only for, 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 for ornament? So that's, that's just a little small curiosity. Uh, it's an ornament. Uh, but why, why, why the ornament? Because you have to understand mm -hmm. uh, Wait uh, You have to understand that the Mexican architecture is is a collision between the, the 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 Christian and the Mexican, right? Yep. So so 
So uh, the, 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 the architecture, the first Mexican Christian architecture is quite strange. Uh, it's, it's, it's in a strange mix. I mean, you must understand uh, somehow the, the colonialism in Asia has a similarity, right? The, the, the transition yes. between one architecture to another architecture is quite difficult. So mm -hmm. Barragan, he's, he's using uh, the inner spaces, the materiality of the monastery, mm -hmm. but he's using the colors of, of the Mexican culture. Wait, wait. This, this is Wixarica people. Can mm -hmm. you see this? The, no, wait. The, the, the internet, this? Yep. Look at the colors. Uh, this, this, this native Mexican, the Nahuatl, the, the Wixarica, mm -hmm. they are in Jalisco, in Guadalajara. So, so this is the colors of Mexico. Barragan is using uh, the machine of habitation of Le Corbusier, the monastery or hacienda of the Spanish uh, colonialism in Mexico, and the Mexican colors. Uh, look, this is the Wixarica, how they dress, how they, how they paint. This is a painting. Mm. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, the, the, you have to understand that the, the Wixarica people have a strong connection with nature. They, they eat a uh, drug called peyote. Have you ever heard of peyote? Mm, yeah, it's, it's like uh, drugs. The, yeah, the organic it's, drugs. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, wait, wait. Oh. wait, wait, Okay, this is an hallucinogen drug called peyote. It makes you trip. So they, they, the Wixarica people, they use peyote to connect with nature, with the deers, with the snake. Uh, look, this is the sacred deer. Uh, yeah, the, the color palette is similar. Yes. It's, 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 it's an, a spiritual connection with nature. So, so peyote thing, this peyote thing is, is more like sacred drugs, it's sacred. right? It's a, not I, everyone. I, I, not mm -hmm. every, I can eat it. It's, it's illegal for me, but it's legal for the Wixarica people. Okay. So, I, I remember this, this video clip of this band, Alje. Alge, right? Alge. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're using peyote to enter the the, the astral astral yeah. life of these, these yeah. women. It's very nice, so, very nice. So Barragan is is. I mean, there are many uh, indigenous tribes in Mexico, and all of them are very colorful. I think color is is part of the landscape of of Mexico because it's very the weather produces a lot of trees, a lot of flowers, uh, a lot of animals. It's not like Europe. Europe is more uh, cold. Uh, there are not many flowers, I think. Uh, but Mexican landscape is very colorful. And yes. the, the culture, uh, I mean, do you remember when I said that the, the religion is very important for Barragan? He's yeah. talking about uh, mythology, uh, the sacrality of the of the 
Mexican native people. Uh, he knows that without the mystery of creation of God, we cannot create beauty. So I, I think Barragan is, is, is using the color to, to connect with the landscape like Mexicans does, like the native Mexicans. I guess that's true. So for sure, the, the, this is the, 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 the general uh, references for, for Mexican art or even architecture or fashion and some other else. Yeah. It's very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, but but uh, the coolest thing is I, I just knew that that famous sublime ping uh, that he used always in mostly his, his, his famous architecture is actually, he got it because of, to make, to make this, uh, Landscape, and yeah, I mean, the the contrast between between the landscape, the greenery, the greeneries to be more uh, boldly colored. So this is yeah. really cool. There is there is actual uh, a question actually. This is from Arma Dani Zula. Hi. Uh huh. Uh, she asked by the chat. Um, okay, I will I will I will read it to you, bro. Uh, I want to ask through this chat. From what I got about Barakan's way in designing, he tried to explain his architecture from inside of his building or interiors, and from how he managed the floor plans and the interspaces. So isn't it true that his architecture aren't can be perceived vividly from the outside since he didn't really pay attention to his exterior? That's, a, that's the question. And what do you think about that? Should we, as, should we as an architect put aside the exterior or facade aspect I mean, it's more about your opinion, I guess. Uh, I, I, uh, okay, Could you, she's asking if we should put more attention in the facade. No, 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 it, it was, it, uh, she was asking like, do you think uh, we should, uh, we should put aside the exterior, um, we, sh we should we uh, should taking care uh, more into the interior than the exterior. I mean, so we should we shouldn't care about the facade. Should should we, should we uh, doesn't care about facade, or what do you think? I mean, Baragan is one modern, example. This is modernity. Mm. Modernity is 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 is, is, is Adolf Luz. Uh, Baragan is inspired by Adolf Luz, of course. Uh, the book um, "Ornament is a Crime." A crime, yeah. Ornament uh -huh. is a crime. Uh -huh. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Barragan, the first architecture of Barragan in Guadalajara is ornamentation everywhere, in the stucco, in the in, in, in the colors, in, in the in the in the. Oh, wait, he's he's using. Look, look at the ornamentation in, the, in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. The cornice, the window, the material here on the stairs, the, 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 the profile of the column, the arches. I mean, he, he, say, he, he never studied architecture. He was repeating uh, uh, sensations that mm -hmm. had moved him spiritually, right? But then he stopped, he moved to Mexico City, and he says, fuck it. <laughs> Aldo Blues, Aldo Blues is, is, uh, is modernity. Yeah. Fuck decoration, I mean, <laughs> ornament and crime. And then the Corbusier, ornament, the Corbusier says, la, the machine of a I mean, <sighs> Peter Sumtor, is more careful with the facade, you know? Uh, for example, in Columba Museum, he's using materiality mm -hmm. to design the facade. But the composition is, is, is just windows because he's yeah. using the windows where he needs to. Mm -hmm. Barragan maybe could have used a different materiality, right? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't care. He's, <coughs> doing, a, he's doing the first, the, I mean, the second wave of modernism, which is postmodernism, and he's, he's, he's still doing functionalism. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. For I him, mean, more, I mean, I, I, I love facades. I love, I love 
churches, I love arches. Uh, 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 I think it's a personal, a personal question. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a subjective. It's, it's, it's yeah. a subjectivity. As yeah. we know, like, like, for example, like Le Corbusier, he has like a three steps of his architecture approach. I mean, when we saw his architecture during these early works, we can see La Fila Safoie, which is only white and, and without any ornaments, without any materials, just, just purely white modernism shape. And then he changed to brutalism and then he changed to the sculptural form like Roncham. I mean, he created poetic space for the very first time in architecture. So yeah. what I think is you could even change. I mean, you could even change. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. As we can see five, five new elements of architecture by, by, by Le Corbusier. He put like a, the, only the horizontal windows, but later on in, in in Roncham, we, 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 we could see this, this ornament, um, yeah. random windows in, in Notre Dame du Hall. So it's really cool. Uh, okay, there, are, there was another questioner, which is Francesco. Franco, Francazzo. Where are you, Francesco? Fra. Where is Francesco? And we have another four questioner. Where is Francesco? Ah, this one. Fra, where is your video? Ciao, Fra. Como esta, Icaro? Dove sei? Lost him. Non ti trovo. We, we lost him. Where Ah, uh, this is... I, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear your... Uh, your voice. So, I guess you should put the... You can put the mute off. You're still in the, on the mute mode. Or oh, you are using your headphones. So click on the mute button. No. <laughs> Sorry, Fra. I mean, Randy, uh, yep. about the facade, this house, Prieto Lopez, mm -hmm. it doesn't have a facade. It's just a stone wall. Yeah, so, that's true. Uh, Barragan is disconnecting from from vulgarity. I mean, for him, I think for him, he he's a romantic person. He loves nature, so mm -hmm. he is protecting the gardens. So the transition from the city, the street, the facade is just like a wall that is uh, stopping the relation. And he's making an emphasis on the interior, on the spirituality, on the solitude, on the um, uh, oneself search for uh, spirituality. I mean, he's connecting with nature. That's the idea. So, Francesco. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear no, you, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Carlo, como está el fracaso? <laughs> Man, okay, okay. thank you, <laughs> thank you for your speech, Danny. It was super cool. It, it, it was an introduction. I mean, I was telling Randy that I have a few books of Barragan. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. translating one book for Ritchie and Bogoni. Okay. Uh, I will. Trans I, I, I sent you yesterday the the, the pretty speech. Yeah, yeah, I saw uh, it. Barragan, yeah. he never teach anywhere. He never gave classes. Uh, he never wrote any theory. He only have three uh, 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 essays, you could say, three, three, three uh, writings. The first is the speech of Richard Price. The other one is a class of landscape architecture that he gave to students in California. And the last one is an interview that he gave to, to, to the son of the best friend of his mother. Okay. I'm translating this. It's, it's a very short book that I'm translating for Ritchie. Wow. Uh, uh, give, us, give it also to us. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's what I'm telling. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I have a question. I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. just, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that the, the conference, the speech that I just gave, is an introduction. Yeah. It's okay. not an advance. 
Okay, so thank you for the introduction then. So, go for the question, Fra. Go for yeah, the my question, question was, uh, you for, for sure you are more uh, into Mexican, Mexican architecture than us. And I would like to ask you, um, it's your opinion about it. How do Barragan um, affected the, um, the future generation of Mexican architects? I mean, which is the lesson that somehow um, you can see in the project of uh, young architects, which also you are in the young, young Mexican architect. Yes. So what yes. do you think is, the, is um, yeah, it's what we can learn about it, what you Mexican architect learn about him? Good question. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna answer you with one uh, uh, quote that is, 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 is like the credo in, in, in Mexican architecture. Uh, wait. Take your time. Yeah. Dale, dale. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, do you see, don't do what I did, but see what I saw. Ah, wait, 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 wait. I have to share the screen. Wait. Where, where can I share the screen? Randy? At the, at the below. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you see now? Yes. Okay. Do you see the quote, don't do what I did, but see what I saw? Yeah. Okay. So, so since the beginning, Barragan said, look at the things that I was looking at. Look at nature, look at religion, look at, uh, at, at landscape, look at the gardens, uh, look at the, 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 the tradition of a Mexican culture of, of the colonialism, the native pyramids and everything. And uh, not everyone understood this. Uh, the first generation, they started to do copies. For example, uh, Ricardo Legorreta. He's from the 80s, 90s. He started to copy Barragan in massive buildings, right? More like Bofield, yeah. Yeah, like Looks Ricardo like... Bofield. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ricardo Legorreta is... 90s, 2000, and uh, still ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He copied what Barragan did. Don't do what I did, just see what I saw. <laughs> okay, so he made it wrong. Nice. He made it wrong. But there's one guy that is doing, no, he's, he's looking at, he saw, uh, who is called Manuel Cervantes. Ah, oh, he just gave us the lecture in, in, in Jakarta. Ah. Mm -hmm. In Indonesia. He just went he to Indonesia. He understands Luigi Barragan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would like to show you the floor plans. I mean, Manuel Cervantes is understanding the spaces of Luis Barragan. And he's not using colors. He's using the, 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 the materiality like Peter Sumter, I would say. Say, uh, shed, shed this moment. So, this is the, the new wave. The, the new wave of architects are, uh, are using the poetic ideas of Luis Barragan, not the, not the copy of the colors, you know, or the crazy poems to, 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 to mitigate that you are using the color, you are going to do something extravagant. He's this guy is doing the phenomenology, right? The, 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 the relation of spaces uh, like with nature. He, he, he kept the process, not the, the result. Yes, exactly. Because yep. Barragan is say, he, he said, see what I saw. Look at the things that I was looking at. So what he was looking at, the landscape, like, like La Lambra de Granada. Uh, he wasn't talking about colors. He, he wasn't talking about forms. He was, he was talking about uh, religion, mythology, the relation of man with nature, and therefore with God. Uh, 
so so I think Manuel Cervantes is the one that is understanding uh, the simplicity of of forms and the complexity of spaces and the relation with nature. Look at this picture. I mean, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Did I answer your question? Yeah, sure. That, did. that was answering answering your question. So, okay, good. Uh, I mean. Uh, just super just, clear, just, super clear. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I will send you the okay. book later. I will send you to <laughs> Wendy and everyone. Even for yeah. all of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, next question will be from Wendy. Wendy. Uh, Wendy is my junior mate from, from Surabaya. Okay. Wendy, are you there? Hello. Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? Thank you, uh, Wendy. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Okay, go, go go for the question, Wendy. It's okay with English or Indonesian up to you. Uh, you can you can hear me. Hello. Yeah. Yes, we can hear, hear you. Me. Okay, okay. Hello. Yeah, Wendy. Okay. Oh, it's better with uh, the headset. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Perfect. You can hear me. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, and thank you for the perfect. Uh, presentation so I learned uh, here about we Baragan is uh, about interiority uh, I mean uh, if it's about exteriority then it's about garden right uh, and then uh, what I want to ask here it is uh, uh, here it's about uh, the poetic I mean uh, if he uh, more concerned about the interiority it will be uh, concerned into uh, the poetic story I, I mean about the uh, human uh, human scale right uh, the experience uh, for the uh, user uh, so yeah. I see the poetic, the poetic uh, architecture here uh, which is it has story storyline I mean uh, if it has storyline it will be uh, have sequence right uh, but I, uh, I just want to open a discussion uh, if uh, is that right if the poetic uh, architecture is uh, linear so if we uh, reverse it back it, it will not uh, work I mean uh, something like if you uh, if if we see the the color uh, from pink to greener uh, for a greener garden uh, then uh, we can cannot reverse it. I mean, uh, from the outset when we go inside, uh, there's nothing happen in story. Uh, yes. What do you think about it? Uh, and, uh, and more about uh, the cross uh, shadow that uh, you saw. Uh, you saw the we saw the picture uh, before. Uh, it's it it really works uh, when we uh, see from uh, the point of view. But uh, when we reverse it. Uh, about this poetic architecture, is it really works about this? So just want to open the discussion. What do you think? Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, if you want to underline uh, the relation with the city, the facade. I mean, why why Barragan is putting more attention in the interior? Is that your question? Uh, my question is uh, about uh, the poetic architecture. Is that uh, is it can can be reversed? I mean, uh, if it's uh, should be uh, has a storyline uh, uh, from the architecture itself. Okay. Uh, I mean, some people like to explore the shape. Uh, some people like to explore the, the, the structure. Uh, Barragan, he was exploring uh, the interior. The, uh, his floor plans are not simple. I mean, Mies van der Rohe is minimalist, right? The, the floor plan of neo, neoplastic floor plan. Barragan floor plan is very complex and uh, if you see this building from the outside you say ah it's nothing it's worthless but the complexity of 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 of, 
of of the plan of Barragan, I mean, is 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 something to think uh, about it. I mean, uh, Barragan was designing an interior, but he was designing, as you say, the experience of living. Uh, I was telling Francesco about a book that I'm translating. I will give it you. I will give it to Randy when I finish to translate it uh, from Spanish to English. And you would understand that Barragan, he was searching for 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 intimacy, uh, uh, the richness. I mean, Le Corbusier talks about in the book uh, when the cathedrals were white. Le Corbusier talks about uh, the machine of habitation, right? And he talks about in the book of uh, the cathedrals when they were white. He's talking about the schedule of time. For example, why do we have to work more than eight hours? Why do we have to work 12 hours uh, living outside on the, on the city and then taking the car? Uh, I mean, Le Corbusier was designing a city, uh, La Villa Radios, uh, for people to have more free time to, 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 to search his own spirituality, right? And Barragan, Barragan, uh, he's he's criticizing the the modernity. Barragan, Barragan is is is, is using modernity of Le Corbusier, the machine of rotation, but he's criticizing the modernity of of what we are having now, a public life. Uh, we don't have any more uh, the the interior individual life. We have Facebook, we have WhatsApp, we have Instagram, uh, we go to bars, we go to, 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 to uh, I mean, we have free pornography. I mean, we have a public life. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. For Barragan, this is the worst thing of modernity. The most important thing for Barragan is the individuality, the, the, the connection with God your spirituality, your, your solitude. So the spaces of Barragan, look, the, uh, he, he goes from one small place to another space. He divides the public space from the private space. Uh, it's very complex because this is the house, this is the studio. So you have the entrance to the stu from the vestibule, the secretary's office, the office of Barragan with his window, the studio, uh, the, 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 the Patio de las Ollas. I mean, Barragan is creating a, a, a complex inner life. Uh, he's going against public life. He's talking about solitude and, 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 and privacy, which modernity has lost it totally. We don't have privacy anymore. Facebook? Is, 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 is collecting all your data, WhatsApp yeah. is collecting all your data. I mean, we don't have privacy anymore. And Barragan anticipated this in architecture. Barragan is saying we need privacy, we need connection with gardens, we need connection with fountains, we need connection with sky. We, we need to be uh, uh, like a monk in solitude. He, he was yeah. like this. Did I answer yeah. your question? How, how about it, Wendy? Because I, I remember I was doing like an architectural competition about chapel with Wendy before. And we were asking about this, about this, the, this, the story behind this poetic architecture. So how about it, Wendy? Is it Danny could answer your question or you, you have some thoughts? Yeah, it's uh, really answering the question. Uh, <laughs> okay. So also from uh, maybe some, some of uh, our participant here uh, also answering uh, by chat, uh, and I see uh, it's a different uh, kind of uh, oh, method that's... that uh, Louis Baragan used uh, with the poetic architecture. But uh, I, I, uh, for me, for me, I feel so, uh, some uh, what, what is it? Poetic architecture 
part on this uh, design, but uh, maybe it's not the the whole thing. The whole thing is about feeling. I just like uh, uh, you told me. I mean, uh, we started uh, with the uh, concern of the feeling of a room uh, and how to uh, uh, what we call it uh, interspace it uh, transition uh, with the transition uh, between uh, the feelings, right? Mm. Yes, the feeling. So I cannot uh, ask more uh, about the point of architecture. Maybe in another another discussion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Barragan never made skyscrapers. He made a few, uh, actually many, uh, apartment buildings, five stories maximum, mm. and they're functionalist. They are quite functionalist. Uh, Barragan made also piazzas, gardens, uh, suburban areas. He, he designed a lot of, 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 of public spaces. Um, you, you, I mean, uh, you, the, the most famous thing of Barragan is, is uh, the translation of, of, of of tradition into modernism and tradition which tradition uh, the Mexican tradition which is the mix between uh, uh, Mesoamerica and Western civilization in, in architecture and but a translation to modernism uh, I, I think I think that as an architect you have to understand your tradition, I mean, your tradition as Indonesian, uh, and how to, how to face uh, a globalized world. I mean, you have to think local and, and, and do global, right? Uh, I, 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 I don't follow the rules of Barragan. I, I, I'm just following uh, his idea of of connection with God and and the connection with tradition and a criticism to modernism to, to, to nowadays. This there's no rule in architecture. What I think is that be, the most you know about your past, you understand your present, and you have and you can uh, 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 produce something that. Uh, creates uh, a solution to the nowadays problem. I mean, Barragan did it in poetry. Uh, the problems are many, uh, housing, uh, ecological. Uh, I mean, there are many problems. Uh, and not everyone, not each problem has the same solution. Barragan was doing poetry. He was doing art. He was an artist. Uh, but you you could focus on on on, on housing, uh, uh, which is another problem and a different solution. Urbanism, uh, uh, the, the the transport, the the the, the communication, the streets, etc. Uh, public transport. You need you know. Uh, Nowadays, cities needs a lot of solutions. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay, is Sorry, that, is, I, I, uh, uh, okay? Did I answer your question? It's because I'm extrapolating a lot. <laughs> yes, it's okay. How was that, Mandy? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's a perfect answer. Okay, uh, maybe another question from Nandi. Where is Nandi? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Go for it, Wendy. Hey, no, Wandi. Nandi, Wandi, no. Nandi. <laughs> After Wandi is Nandi. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you okay, for the presentation, Mr. Daniel. Thank, thank you. Amazing. Uh, my, I, my question is the principle or the ideas that Luis Barragan had with his ideas of solitude, uh, the connection inside and outside, and his use of pet patios and everything these are 
ideas that benefit from excess excess of space uh, in a simple term man but these times these days we don't have that privilege of access so yeah. my question is how do you think this way of seeing this I, his ideas and his dialogue uh, or phenomenology in general work without this privilege of access that's a good uh, that's a really good question that's what i'm trying to say to the last guy uh, wandita wandi wandita is okay <laughs> Eh, 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 eh. Okay. It's a different time. Barragan, he was born in the 1902. And if you remember uh, his childhood, as I... Wait, wait, where is this? No, oh, okay. No, wait, wait, wait. How, how can I share my screen? Right uh, you, you, you can stop your shared screen first and ah, do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. okay. Uh, Barragan childhood uh, it, it was romanticized but this is not Guadalajara City this is a, this is like a small town outside Guadalajara City uh, I mean he was born and raised uh, in this time in this era uh, we, we live in a different world. So, 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 so the question is, is Barragan outdated? <coughs> Maybe the buildings, they are, but the idea of, 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 of saving the privacy, saving the, the solitude, saving the connection with nature is not lost. Mm. What is the solution? I mean, you would say, uh, stop! Stop! Uh, 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 the, 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 the 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 sharing information. I mean, we, we could say that Julian Assange, uh, Snowden, they are defending our privacy. They are defending our rights to 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 not be uh, spied by everyone, by the government. Uh, this is. The privacy is, 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 is the proposal of Luis Barragan. Uh, how, how are you uh, connected with your own spirituality? This is what, what, what he was searching in, in, in architecture. You can search the idea of your own spirituality in music, in, 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 in painting, in, in science, whatever. Uh, the translation of, of, of the intimacy and on the connection of one person yourself with God is what Barangan was searching. How how do we face these things nowadays? There are many many ways in architecture. Uh, uh, I would I would say, fuck, it's difficult because we don't have the space anymore. The 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 the, the, the cities are huge. My my city is. 8 million people. Mexico City is 25 million people. I mean, how do you have privacy? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the answer, but it's a good question. Uh, should, we, should we erase all the Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp accounts? Should we, should we, should we liberate from the espionage of the Chinese or the American government? to find our solitude, to find our mysterious connection with God. I mean, how do we translate this to architecture? I don't know. Uh, Barragan did it uh, with poetry, uh, with phenomenology in architecture, with, 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 with the use of materials, with the translation of, of uh, gardens, the, the connection with gardens, with, with uh, spaces, courtyards, uh, conserving the tradition. Uh, I, I, I mean, it's a good question. Uh, not everyone can build a, a big house like this and disconnect yeah. <laughs> from reality. I mean, exactly. We don't live in these times anymore. Mm. But that's the problem. Why? 
why we don't have privacy anymore? Where can I find my privacy? This is, this is the question that, that you, you should learn from Barragan. How, how can we defend our, 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 our rights to, to be an intimate connection with God? Mm, yeah, I see. That's the question. I, I mean, what we can learn from Barragan is, is to make questions. How to face the complexity of our nowadays. Okay. Mm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's like, it's like the oasis in the middle of Mexico City. You always yes. say like Mexico City is like a, like a metaphor. No, no, no. The, the, um, the labyrinth of Miratobra and, and architecture of Luis Barragan spreading as the oasis in all over the city that carries yes. some privacy exactly. and some peacefully, peacefully space towards it. Many discussion here happened in the Zoom group chat about feeling for sure, because I guess Danny Jackson asked before about, uh, no, Danny Jackson explained that feeling could be the, the design methods. And yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's more like a, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a, Confusing these days, how phenomenology could, could be the the design method itself because there there are not so many many books or many official academics books relating to the phenomenological towards the design methods because it's more about feeling and subjectivity. That's that's what I think. I, I guess Isa Morales, Isa Morales, uh, Iñaki, who, Solo Morales. Yeah, yeah, the guy who ever worked. For for, for Mies van der Rohe, I guess. Oh, he said that okay. phenomenology is, is a weak theory. Or maybe it's not a theory. I don't know, because whenever I, I read about uh, Peter Zumthor's book or, or The Eye of the Skin by Palasma, it's, uh -huh. it's not that, it's not something that, it's not like step, you know? It's, it's, it's not like a, the least of step that you have to do to, to, make, to, talk, to approaching uh, one of the design methods. But, I don't know. Do you, do you think it, is it possible for one day this uh, phenomenology approach from 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 Baragan, from from Louis Kahn, Zumthor, Ando, Siza? Do you Man, think mm -hmm. what you said about the, the the oasis in, in in Mexico City? You, I mean, that's a a, a perfect answer of the Wandita and Nandita question. Uh, Wandi how, and Nandita. Uh, Wandi, well, okay. The first guy is Wandi and the second guy is Nandita. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, the, the question is, uh, look, this is a picture of Mexico City. I mean, Mexico City is crowded. Imagine Tokyo. I mean, maybe Surabaya. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's heavily populated. So how do you design a city where uh, you need oasis? I mean, maybe you have to go into politics or uh, doing a movement. I mean, uh, it's always it's always difficult to follow an idea. Uh, ideas is like they say, ideas. The person, the man can die, but the idea never die, right? Yep. Mm. Uh, I understand the phenomenology of, of Zumthor. I mean, to not design facades, to not design shapes, but to design quality spaces uh, with quality materials. Mm. This architecture, I mean, uh, uh, and, and, and architecture is, uh, is, 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 is a functional art. I mean, uh, mm. you can produce something that uh, makes a solution to a complexity of a city, uh, a complexity of a populated city, and, 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 and try to, to use this, this, these poetic ideas. 
but it's just a medium. Uh, yeah. Just a medium. Mm -hmm. is, 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 is a medium. I mean, yep. there's no rule. I mean, you can follow. We were discussing this this the other day. Uh, why do I hate Saha Hadid? Why do I hate Frank Gehry? Uh, <laughs> I mean, they are creating uh, avant-garde architecture, but is I hate it because I cannot do it, uh, and I don't like it because it's not traditional. What I like to do in architecture is to follow uh, to recover uh, the complexity of uh, Mexican tradition, uh, the religion, the the spirituality of indigenous tribes, etc., and translate it to, 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 to modernism. Uh, that's what I like. But the right path. Yeah. Rizzi, Renato Rizzi will hate Taha Hadid. Uh, because he's against technology, but uh, you, you, this, this is a problem because the parametric design can offer you the idea. You, you remember you were doing this uh, workshop in Venice where this person showed a building completely built by robots. Yeah, ETH Zurich. The, yes. Um, printing from ETH Zurich. That's the future. I mean, to use machines to build. Mm -hmm. But and this will create solutions uh, to the needs, the human needs. But you have to be uh, aware of, of 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 how to use technology to create beauty. I mean, yeah. uh, it's paradoxical because technology kills beauty. But it's necessary for human needs. That's true. That's true. Okay. Okay. Okay, we, we, we should move to another question. Maybe Fikri, Isa, Ojal? Where are you, Ojal? Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Jal. Hello. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you guys for coming to our our small collective, and uh, especially for you, Dan, uh, you're you, my man. prophet, I think. Yeah. Bagi, so, bagi. Uh, my question, maybe this, uh, my statement would be answering uh, what what uh, Randy was questioning at the first at the first question about about the ornaments of the color uh, of Barragan's works. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, I was uh, reading about. Uh, how 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 Baragan tried to put the colors into his work, and as we know, uh, he always put pink to you know you to to find the inverse colors of the green, because uh, he really in love with all the natural scenery. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, he also tried to put the yellow yellow color to highlight uh, uh, to represent the religion i think if i'm not mistaken and and mm -hmm. as we know that Luis Barragan mm -hmm. is uh, always uh, um is always put religion into his work some of his work like you know the the capital one if 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 we see the color uh, he tried to put the yellow sun by by uh, biasing the sunlight into the into the yellow glass and then uh, then all the room uh, suddenly uh, uh, colored by the yellow sun, and uh, uh, but uh, you 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 tell you tell us that uh, uh, the the color color of the burger is based on the Mexican culture, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, yes. And then uh, uh, my questions is about uh, uh, it may be uh, really far from architecture, but. Um, uh, is it uh, so? Uh, can can I assume that uh, the yellow color is really re rep representing a religion in Mexico? That's my very first questions. And the second one is is really not really not about design and philosophical. And I always try to uh, to 
question these questions uh, on every uh, on every person who who uh, tell us about architects. The second question is: uh, um, We know uh, we all know that Bergen always uh, always try to make uh, works that really intimate to his clients and really personal. And if we if I'm not mistaken, I've, I've read uh, the Bergen Pritzker speech about uh, how he tried to involve the solitude, so his client uh, so his work is. Only for those who, who try to who try to you know fear uh, you know uh, you yes. just try to face the fear and uh, I mean like come on uh, mm. uh, uh, did he he has a lot, have any other works that really you know just for fucking money sake uh, since we know that mm. I don't think we, we can make make money from that kind of uh, idealism. That's, that's all my question, I think. Well, yeah, that's all my questions. This is a really good question. I'm going, I'm going first for the yellow color. Uh, Barragan never wrote anything. Uh, he never said, I use this color for this or this color for that. There are only speculations. Uh, we don't know uh, why he was using the colors. You can only assume. You can think that, ah, oh, Barragan was using the colors. My, my, I, my assumption is to think that Barragan was using the Wixarica colors. Which is? But everyone, other Mexican architects will say, no, Barragan was doing something different. And, and someone else would say, no, Barragan was doing something different. I mean, everyone has his own theory because uh, Barragan, wa, Barragan was like a, a mysterious person. He, he wasn't building a public life. He wasn't building a public figure. He was building a, a intimate, personal, a spiritual experience. So uh, we don't know. We don't know why he was doing the things like he did because there's no books. There's no nothing he wrote. Uh, but. I was telling Francesco and then I was telling Randy that uh, a few years ago, uh, the only person that gave, uh, that made an interview to Barragan published the, inter the interview. And in this interview is the perfect synthesis of the thinking of Barragan. And uh, can you repeat me the second question? I'm going to connect it. The, the second question is about uh, this is this is not really uh, philosophical just just me trying to figure out how Bergen works in his business uh, I'm just wondering uh, okay. how, how, how can we how can we serve how can he survive just by doing those uh, you know uh, intimate uh, some kind of idealism did, did, projects? Did he have another uh, yes. business uh, and he's being an architecture where, where he got I heard he, he was also very rich, right? Uh, but Barragan, also... Barragan was doing money to do architecture. Las Capuchinas Sacramentarias, he paid for it. Oh my he, God. He, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. he paid for this. So, so uh, he, he, he made business, he made business because his family was rich, I think. And then he made business with uh, urban developments. Okay. And then he was investing his money in, in to do architecture. Uh, you could say that his best architecture, the client was himself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 he was doing what what he really wanted. He was so, he was doing he was doing poetry. Yeah. So, so for example, money. Uh -huh. I mean. Where, where do you think he got his 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 money for living? I mean, he did I mean, a if, lot of uh, urban developments and business, urban development, uh, right? With, with the he, government, he was, or he was into real estate. Okay, so he he, had, he, got, he, he bought he properties. He he mm -hmm. designed the houses and then he sold the houses. Okay, uh, so he he had this he had this job, besides yes. his yes. poetic architectures. Yes, okay. yes. That's the idea. So, Ojal, is that answering? 
I'm that's that's good enough. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, I guess you have to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's there's <laughs> one friend of mine. He he designed a house for a client full of intimate intimate spaces, mm. and the client say, "I want a fucking window because it's modern." But the window was looking at the street or looking at the other house neighbor. <laughs> And my friend was telling, no, I mean, you, you don't need this light. You don't need to be seen by other people. And he mm. said, and the client said, I don't care. I want a window. I mean, uh, you have to face that. You have to teach the clients to understand uh, a philosophy of living. I mean, how to, how to, how to approach your mm. living intimate spaces to nature and mm. to be kind of uh, to save your own privacy yeah uh, I mean people say that the best architecture is because they have, there was a good client I mean yeah. so so yes Baragan he, he he made a lot of money and then and then he he stopped I think for 10 years he stopped doing architecture to think how to make better architecture and then he paid for it. Uh, so he had the money to do it. This, so this that's of, that's mm -hmm. the small this, this, this moment of uh, when when he stopped doing architecture must be like a reflection. Yes. Uh, for his life and his his turning point to to did the, another architecture of his nep, he uh, another architecture from his life step. So it's, that's really cool. I guess it's very answering for 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 Ajal. No, thank you Ajal for the question. Well, so you have to I find think, another I land. Think, the property now <laughs> okay for another question is gabriela marcellina where are gabriela um, you yes, can hello, um, hello? Um, thank hello, you Gabriel. for the presentation before it was really great um well i'm still curious about casa gilardi uh -huh. um, as you mentioned before casa he creates the transition yeah casa gilardi um, as you mentioned before he creates the transition from public space to private space using the element of light um so yes. i want to know did Luis Baragan only use light to make the transition or yeah. there were any other elements to make people know or feel that they are now in a transition space from private space to public space? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, he, he's using many different things. He's using the materials. Uh, for example, in Casa Prieto Lopez, uh, let me search. Uh, okay. In Casa Prieto Lopez, um, I want to show you the picture from the outside. It's impossible to find it. Okay. So, in Casa Proyecto Lopez Barragan has, uh, you have to understand that the house is in a, in an area where there was a volcano eruption. So this is the, this volcanic stone. So from the street, he puts a wall made of stone and then you have the patio with the paved stone tiles. And then you go inside with the tiles to here. Uh, materiality. Materiality is very important. Uh, it's, it's as important as light uh, because uh, he's preparing you to go from, from the outside to a reception site. This is the Casa Gilardi. So uh, uh, you, have, you have the entrance then you have the division from the public space, which is the, the lower ground, to the private space, which is the highest uh, ground. Uh, Barragan was using the, 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 the vinculations from private to public. So, 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 so you want to, 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 to have a, a, a organized, to organize the different uh, the, 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 different, the difference between a, 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 
a living room or, uh, for example, a TV room. In a TV room, you are with your family or with your friends. In a living room, you can invite more people. I mean, Barragan uh, uses the, the transition spaces to change from public to private. Uh, I, I, want to sh I, I want to find a picture, but okay. Uh, materiality, light, uh, the size of the spaces, you can use many, many different uh, solutions to create the changes from one function to another. Um, uh, did I answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you, Gabriela. So, uh, maybe, maybe last question because it's almost 11. Okay. Uh, uh, Barragan uh, was using the, 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 the traditional materials. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the relation, the materials are related to the landscape. The volcanic stone is related to the geologic uh, history of Mexico. Uh, the colors are related to the cultures of Mexico. The light is 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 is, is, is the landscape, the, the connection with yeah. God. So I guess so Bar Barragan was using these kind of connections to to make transitions, and the transitions are inspired in the architecture of the colonial the colonial architecture, especially the monasteries. If you look at the monastery plan, you would see different kind of links and connections between between the patio, the loggia. The, the living room, the, the, the cell of the monk, and, and Barragan knew this kind of uh, different uh, 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 complexity of connections or in the tradition of uh, uh, Mexican architecture. And he translated to modernity. So, so what I would suggest is to understand your, your tradition culture, your relation with, with, with landscape as, as a culture, and then translate it into modernity. Okay, Randy. Okay, that's that's actually true. I, I guess he also mentioned a little bit about this volcanic materials, uh, volcanic stones in in the speech of his Prisker Price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the last question will be uh, for Danny Vichaksono. Danny. Danny talking to Danny. <laughs> hey, Danny. Okay. <laughs> hey, Danny. Ap <laughs> no, that's that's not bad. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think I have to show my face. The images of uh, your shared screen here is much more beautiful than uh, my face, I think. Uh, but uh, congratulations for this event. It's amazing. Congratulations to uh, Randy and friends and. And Danny as well, uh, the presentation and explanation is uh, terrific. It's uh, intriguing and stimulating as well, I think. And um, personally, I, I kind of uh, interested in the two aspects that has been discussed throughout the, throughout the discussion. One is about um, how we could emulate or how, how we could uh, create a phenom phenomenal phenomenological architecture in today's context, which is very interesting, uh, given all the situation that has been described by everyone. Uh, but, uh, and, and the second one is about um, understanding your past and your cultural or, or your ancestral heritage in order to kind of create something in the present that has a a strong character, I think. That is, I think, what we could uh, take from your presentation about Louis Baragan. But um, I want to touch more to the second uh, topic that I just uh, said, because the, I think the, phenomo the phenomenology uh, uh, architecture, you know, creating phenomenological architecture today is a very interesting topic that 
you know, I don't know when we could discuss, but I would really love to discuss about that in a, a di different segment with, I think, everybody who is interested in, in uh, discussing about that. Um, I have a, a, I think I have one question only about, about the past culture and ancestral heritage. Um, in, you know, South America has a very unique position in terms of uh, ancestral heritage and un understanding the past and culture. Um, of, I, I studied a little bit about Brazilian architecture and some of their modernist architects has this problem of uh, who I am, or what is my ancestral heritage is. Is it a of Portuguese mm -hmm. or is it of uh, South Americanese? Uh, I wonder if that happens with Mexican architects as well. Uh, in your generation, probably you can speak for your generation a little bit. And also, what do you know about Baragan's position in terms of, of that, uh, that aspect, that uh, ancestral heritage uh, situation? And mm -hmm. also, probably you could explain a little bit the, uh, how is intellectual, how was intellectual discourse in the, in Luis Baragan times around 1930s between Spanish Mexican and Spanish European. Um, okay. Uh, how, how does that affect each other? And more importantly, how that affects uh, Baragan uh, that shaped his awareness and shaped his uh, understanding and also, which more importantly, conviction, his architectural conviction. Um, mm -hmm. How how does that happen? I think I think that two question probably. Um, okay, it, it, the last the last thing you said about the um, the intellect, intellectual uh, sphere of Baragan in the thirties, uh, it's, it's a really good question. Uh, the 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 the, revol the Mexican Revolution finished uh, at the beginning of the last century, and uh, we were following the French architecture, uh, neoclassic, and uh, and the introduction. Uh, okay, Barragan introduced modernity into Mexico. Uh, but it wasn't only him. Uh, there were four four architects in in, in in Guadalajara. Well, four civil engineers in Guadalajara: uh, Ignacio Díaz Morales, Pedro Castellanos, Rafael Ursúa, and Luis Barragán. Luis Barragán made poetry. Ignacio Díaz Morales he made the first school of 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 of, of architecture in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, he he went to Europe after the Second World War, and he brought <coughs> many architects from 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 Europe, uh, like Matthias Geritz. Matthias Geritz was a a, 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 a big friend of Luis Barragan. Uh, uh, also, this guy. Um, Oh, Bruno Cadore, Matias Geritz, uh, oh, what was the name of this other guy? Okay, so Ignacio Diaz Morales traveled to Europe and he brought many, many architects to Guadalajara to teach architecture. So they made the first school of architecture. There was no school of architecture in Mexico until the 1945, I think. So Barragan and Díaz Morales, they modernized Mexico and they, they, they made a, a change between the classic, neoclassic, uh, revivalist architecture into modernism. Uh, 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 slowly Barragan uh, started to understand that modernity was killing some kind of traditions. The same happens with Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier was a, a strong radical modernist, and then he changed to vernacular architecture. The same happened with Luis Barragan, because he, 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 with the time, he 
we came to understand that tradition is the most revolution, to, to say tradition is the most revolutionary thing you can do. I mean, uh, but you don't, you, you don't repeat the same things the other, uh, the, the, the people in your country did in the past. Uh, the repetition is, 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 is the worst thing you can do. Uh, uh, repeating Barragan is, 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 is a bad design. You have to understand uh, uh, the, the tradition and then to modernize and uh, make solution to the to nowadays problems. Uh, phenomenology is, 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 is like a current of, of, of art and architecture where uh, the solution of, of the poetry is based on uh, the emotions you can have through uh, different uh, uh, per kind of perception, the tactile, the, the smell, the, 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 the noise, uh, I mean, uh, the thermical uh, uh, sensation. I mean, uh, phenomenology is, 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 is like going against this uh, idea of, of, of facade, shape, form, which is killed by Adolf Luz. I mean, uh, um, what is Adolf Luz? Adolf Luz is uh, it's a revolution, uh, a revolutionary thinker, and he's saying that ornament is it's a crime because he's making people more poor and mm. if you stop using the 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 the, 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 the decorative things you mm. start to think more pragmatically and more efficient made of do the things that everyone needs so so out of blues is 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 is, is not le corbusier is not mies van der rohe the, the, the father of modernity is Adolf Luz. Because yeah, it's before, before two of them. Yes, of course. And Adolf Luz said, no, we have to change how we produce or everything. Uh, he has this book, uh, uh, both uh, words on the emptiness, I think, by Adolf Luz. And he, he, he talks how to do furniture, how to do uh, clothes, how to do everything in a modern way and and phenomenology is like a current that is trying to follow uh, in a vernacular way in a traditional way uh, the idea of Adolf Luz which if we understand the international style was a repetition a banal repetition of the crystal building everywhere and we, it's like Kenneth Frampton says that uh, the ubiquitous uh, monotony of one culture everywhere. I mean, you have to say tradition, but you have to go uh, into the future. Mm. Uh, and I think the future will be uh, the parametric design and building with robots. But nowadays, parametric design is not thinking about the past. And that's the problem, because when you only think about the future, you are not doing uh, art. You are doing technology and science. And architecture is, is not only technology and, 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 and science. Uh, it's poetry. It's, it's art. And Adolf Lewis understood this. He, he knew that the revolution of industrial revolution would change the, the, the way we design. And, 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 and he changed uh, but he he didn't stop doing art. Uh, so 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 I think that we we have to understand the complexity of our needs in nowadays globalized world, mm. and and the solution of technological and science uh, tools, but to never forget the past. And phenomenology is is a way of 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 recover. Um, in an abstract way, the tradition. Thank you. So that's all, Danny? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
No, I mean the other Danny. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all good, Danny. Yeah, all good. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Danny. Uh, to you for joining with us. So I guess it's already two hours. It was a great. It was a great uh, discussion happened today, and I'm glad uh, for doing it. Uh, this is this is. It was our first international session that we use English as the main language. We we're we're going to do this every once every month for the international session and and next week we're going to talk about Junya and Shigami from Gilang uh, by Indonesian. So so maybe uh, three weeks from uh, sorry four weeks from now we're going to to talk about Peter Eisenman from my friend. Who, who worked there. So we also with international international um, language. So it's, it's, we hope that many people could join, many international uh, friends could join. That's the idea. Uh, not only to talk with it, some other fellows from Indonesia, but more over, over the world. So Daniel, uh, once again, happy birthday, bro. Happy I, bro. I believe it's already 11. I am now in Mexico, so you have to go to the work. So yeah, I had to play <laughs> so, Barlet. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. So uh, I hope you're also uh, having a good answer with the, the scholarship with for for yeah. Butler, right? Yeah. So okay, so okay. thanks a lot hope, for everyone who's joined. Yet, yeah. sorry, bro. I hope you enjoy, and uh, I tell you, Randy, that. I will translate the books of Baragan for you. Yep. Uh, I think it's, for me, it's more interesting his thinking than his work. I mean, his work is, is, is poetic, but mm. his thinking is, is, is quite uh, a search for spirituality, which is, is in architecture, it's, it's a good, it's a good yep. reference for, for phenomenology architecture. So I, I also agree because the, the translation is the beginning of the new era. I mean, Renaissance was born because Leon Battista Alberti started to translate um, 10 books of architecture by Vitruvio from Latin to Italian. So I hope by translating this, this book from, from Spanish into English, I hope there must be something for us. So yeah. thanks a lot, Danny. Thanks a lot for everyone who joined, bro. Good luck. So see you guys, everyone, and see you next week. Thank you, Danny. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, by the way, we will upload it in YouTube, this recording. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, before. Um, I would like to introduce our... Um, uh, I, I would like to introduce Rabung Mada, uh, the, the one who, co who organized everything. Uh, Rabung Mada is founded by, by Akbar Yunaidi, Fikri Iza. Uh, Nisita Absari, Sulfikar Ibrahim, Gilang Fajar, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? And no, me and my friend. Friend. This company. Uh, this company. Yeah. yeah, me and my friend Zevanya uh, start to join also Rabumada since from this year. Rabumada is an architectural collective that has a passion together to continue the architectural movement, having anxieties and trying to bridge in between conceptual and pragmatic because we believe that architecture can depart and come from anywhere. And our big dream is to build an architecture civilization in Indonesia. So I guess that's all. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Love you, Randy. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Danny.